When we started the H3 program, our goal was to combat this stigma. And it is absolutely necessary. We need to stop pretending the things we're experiencing at work are not affecting us. Welcome to our podcast series, Health Calls with Dr. K. During this podcast series, we're going to talk about a lot of different things, but specifically it's about medicine, the human side of medicine. We all have questions about our health, and who can you turn to? The doctors that you trust. Hi everyone, today we're joined by Dr. Ali Liu, who is an emergency room doctor and the patient safety officer here at LAC USC. Hi Dr. Liu. Hi. It's so nice to have you here today. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. So we have a lot of questions for you. Um, before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be the patient safety officer? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, I grew up in Southern California. Um, my mom, is, as uh, many of you know, is a nurse here as well. She's been in the county for quite a few years. Um, and so I was always interested in medicine. Um, I went to medical school in Boston at Tufts University and then came here and did my emergency medicine residency at LAC USC, which is one of the best ER residencies in the country. I'm very proud to have trained here um, and learned from all of the amazing patients that we have here. And I really just fell in love with this medical center. I fell in love with the patients. I fell in love with the people here, the mission um, of this place, and I just, you know, I really wanted to um, stay and see how I could help out the hospital more and I became really interested in quality improvement while I was a resident. I did quite a few projects um, with my mentor who was Dr. Eric Way at the time um, and then uh, got involved with um, some of the things that he had started at the hospital level, the Healthcare Admin Scholars Program, um, the H3 program which I believe we're talking about later. Um, so I got involved as a resident and you know was really interested in learning more and so they started a quality improvement uh, leadership fellowship here under Dr. Way at the time, Dr. Spellberg and Dr. Coffey um, and Dr. Sarf and so I joined that um, fellowship. I had a, a co-fellow and we you know were kind of apprentices for a year um, you might say in into this place and, and leadership at the hospital level and so um, I was lucky enough to stay and get hired as the patient safety officer after that, and um, here we are today. Well, thank you. And, and for those of us who don't know what a patient safety officer does, uh, can you explain to us what that position holds? Yeah, absolutely. So I will tell you it is different at, at many different hospitals. Um, here, you know, the patient safety officer role can kind of encompass almost everything in the medical center you know really everyone is working on patient safety that's what we're all here for um, but really I um, you know I work a lot with risk management and responding to safety incident reports and um, looking into things like that um, a lot of the residents and other staff will come to me if there's an incident on their unit uh, we also do patient safety huddles every day in the various um, units, med surge units, to just check in on staff, make sure they have everything that they need for the day um, to take care of patients, and if they don't, you know, try to get them the resources that they need. Um, I also, you know, have been working a lot on reducing our hospital-acquired infections, and so our central line infections, our Foley catheter infections, um, we have a pretty high rate of those, and so I've spent a lot of time on those. Um, and other hospital-acquired injuries, and just making sure that you know, although we're a safety net hospital, our patients deserve top-notch care. And so figuring out how we can deliver that top-notch care at this setting has been, I, I guess, my number one goal. And thank you for explaining that. I'm sure that it has been very challenging during this time, especially during the pandemic, with your leadership roles. How do you think that you've been able to adjust with the limitations that the pandemic al allows us in, in regards to contact with others? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's role is different during the pandemic. I think a lot of us have switched roles, trying to figure out how we can do things um, remotely um, while also being here for our staff. Uh, I did a few, a little bit of teleworking in the beginning, but really felt like I needed to be here um, at the units every day, just checking on people. And so I've been here, um, but really the role has changed. Now it's much more on improving communication, supporting staff, um, you know, obviously we're still trying to keep patients safe and that's always gonna be everyone's primary goal, 
but really focused on staff wellness at this time because we can't keep the patients safe if we're not taking care of ourselves. Um, and so that's kind of how the role has changed. Now you do a lot to take care of us, meaning the hospital staff during this time. Can you tell us your role? And you mentioned it, H3 earlier. Yeah, so the H3 team stands for Helping Healers Heal. And um, it was developed several years ago, like I said, by Dr. Wei and one of our awesome, um, you know, a big group of, of people, but another awesome uh, 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 partner in this was Dr. Toby Fischel, who's uh, our GME wellness psychologist. And the team was initially developed to address second victim syndrome. So a second victim is when healthcare workers experience stress, um, or sadness or affected negatively by something that happens at work, whether that's an adverse event that, you know, they made a mistake on a patient, um, or if it's just, you know, a patient death or, um, you know, a staff assault or something, something that happens while at work, um, but yet you're feeling, you're feeling saddened by it. And we've trained now over 500 peer supporters, H3 peer supporters, which are just other hospital staff. So physicians, nurses, our volunteers, we have medical students, we have you know, respiratory therapists, we have um, clinic support clerks, we have a lot of people who've been trained in H3. Um, and we, we rely on them when there's an incident in a unit. And so if somebody has um, a stressful event, you know, a staff assault or something like that, we can be called um, to come provide maybe one-on-one -on -one peer support to that person or a group debrief. And so, you know, we've done group debriefs with medicine teams who've had a lot of deaths in one week or had, a, you know, to deliver a lot of bad news in one week. Um, we've done a group debrief in the emergency department multiple times um, when there's, you know, multiple codes or, you know, a lot of times pediatric codes and pediatric things are, um, um, can, produce a lot of second victim syndrome in people. I know that the, the PICU led by Dr. Stotts, um, uh, the H3 team led by Dr. Stotts and the PICU has done a lot of routine H3 debriefs because the PICU is just you know, a place that, that people can feel a lot of emotions in. Sure. Um, and so the residents there I know do monthly debriefs. And so we've, you know, we've done what we can to just kind of incorporate this into normal life. Um, just kind of normalizing these feelings, normalizing debriefs, and just normalizing talking to one another about these stressful events at work because they're going to happen. Um, they're not going to go away, and we've realized that you know staff um, need a way to cope with this, or we're going to lose them. They're going to you know drop out. They're going to leave medicine, um, and there's lots of incidences of that happening all over the world. I think that. You know, finally, um, and maybe this pandemic has brought it to light more, we we're realizing that we really need to offer more support to our staff. Um, because it's not normal to see people die. That's not a normal thing. Absolutely. Um, and I think that, you know, that's just one thing, but there's so much that happens here that's not normal. Uh, it's not your normal, you know, nine to five Starbucks job or whatever it may be. So. Um, so we've just, you know, we're, we're constantly working on providing that second victim or peer support to staff. And you mentioned a lot of important things. One of them is healthcare uh, workers burnout is essentially what you're trying to address. Um, but understanding that going through these difficult periods and emotions, uh, it's, it's, it affects all of us. And so maybe we're not so alone if we can cope together. But I think if you, for example, in a situation where you're in the emergency room and you are having a patient who can't see their family member and they're connecting via an iPad and might need to get intubated, right? You might have a lot of emotions and might need some way to process that. If I were to call on you for an H3, what might a debrief look like? What could I experience during that session with you? Yeah, good question. So. Um, the sessions can be anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. It's just kind of however long somebody has time. Um, and remember, none of us are trained therapists. We are peers. Um, our H3 peer supporters have gone through three hour, a three-hour training session. So a lot of us are very novice. Um, and it's meant to be that way. I think you know, what you want to do is just let somebody know that they're not alone in what they're feeling. 
um, that you've maybe gone through that too. And so, you know, usually we would just start off by saying, I heard what happened here in the ER today. Um, and just hearing about it actually makes me feel very sad for you and very sad for this family. Um, how are you doing? How are you feeling right now after this event? Um, and usually we just are quiet after that and we just give whoever else, maybe it's a, a group or one person, just space to talk. Um, in a group debrief, sometimes we have a talking piece that we'll pass around and each person can say something that they want to when they have the talking piece and it's their turn. Um, or they can pass it if they're uncomfortable and they just want to listen, which I think is also helpful for the, the quieter people to just listen. So it sounds like it's not only normalizing, but allowing an opportunity to speak if you have something to say or just listen, but in any way you are allowing yourself to process the moment. Exactly, yeah. And do you think that, I'm sure a lot of our colleagues have appreciated everything you and the H3 team has done. Have you gotten any sort of feedback, especially during this time where people have utilized H3 and um, told you about how it's helped them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, just last week we were in the ICU and, and somebody said, you know, because I asked them afterwards, I said, is this helpful? Do you like this? Should we do this more? Um, and somebody said, just thank you for being here. You know, just your presence even if there was not a lot to be said and even if it was only five minutes like just knowing that somebody cares about us is beyond helpful um, and so i've just found that to be very rewarding showing that somebody cares that's such a small but important thing to do absolutely yeah and what do you think keeps you personally motivated you're doing so much and you're taking care of not only so many patients but our own staff what do you think keeps you motivated to do all of these things yeah great question i think it's um in some ways it's kind of fun and exciting and and challenging i like a challenge um so it's been interesting to kind of think through how we're going to support our staff in this way um, i've been thankful that we already had the h3 program um, a lot of times after an H3, you know, our supporters need support because uh, we're really crawling into that hole with people and feeling those emotions with other people. And so I find myself um, and other supporters after H3 deb debriefs feeling a lot of feelings. And so we rely on each other. We do, you know, little debriefs in our office <laughs> afterwards, like how did it go? I make sure to check in on people and see how they're doing because um, it can be a really tough time for everybody. And, I think you know what's what's so important is just taking care of yourself, um, and if you take care of yourself, you can show up more for other people. And so, you know, I've been you know focusing as much as I can on taking care of myself, um, making sure I'm getting exercise and sleep and um, all of those important things in life that um, you know exist outside of work. So, well, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, there are other programs that have started in the county to really acknowledge that healthcare workers might need an extra support during this time. Can you talk about the other programs that are also being offered? Yes, yeah, so I'm so happy for all of the people who have partnered with the H3 team. Now we've kind of formed this hospital wellness group, um, if you will. So Schwartz Rounds, led by um, Malaya and um, Tracy Samco, Dr. Samco, um, have been phenomenal. They've existed for a long time in this medical center, but now we've been able to sort of partner and make sure that we are tackling the right issues, um, having the right panelists, and kind of um, keeping in with each other's themes. Uh, and so it's been great. They've been able to offer more sessions, even make sessions DHS-wide, um, since they're all virtual now. And um, they've just been a, a fantastic partner. Um, in addition, we've had the Department of Psychiatry reach out. So the Care for County staff program was started at the beginning of this pandemic led by um, one of the residents in the Department of Psychiatry um, who's been amazing. So she has offered peer support again, um, but from a, a, psych a psychiatrist, which I think some of the staff sort of appreciate as well. So they might need a little bit more um, uh, experience or just somebody who's more even outside of the medical center to talk to which I think outside of the 
intensive care unit or the ER or whatever they're experiencing to talk to. Um, and so they've offered an email address where they can set up a, a, a brief phone call, a 30 minute phone call, or they have a phone number where you can leave a voicemail to schedule a brief phone call as well, which has been really well, real well received. Um, and then we also have your podcast, which has been phenomenal, I think, for staff to just hear um, that there are other people in this medical center who are experiencing these things, who understand what they're going through, um, and just to feel a little bit more connected. I think we need as much connection as we can get in this time of being distant and being isolated, um, as some might feel. And so having something to you know, listen to on your drive to work or your drive home uh, that makes you feel more connected, I think is, has been really great. Um, the chaplains have been fantastic partners in this. They've always done such great work with their patients and now they're also focused on staff wellness. So they've been doing H3s or you know, circles or whatever they can do um, for staff as well. And the Department of, Psych of, um, of Social Work has also stepped up as well and just offered uh, H3s for staff and other you know, sort of projects for wellness and um, to offer staff support. So um, everyone's been so great, so willing. Even you know, the palliative care department as well reached out, like how can we provide sessions to staff? And they're also H3 trained and so um, helping us walk around to units and just check in on people has been you know, really, really um, nice to see from all of these different people. Thank you for explaining that. It sounds like um, we're all trying to do whatever we can to support one another during this difficult time and hopefully it's helping. And is there a way, if I need an H3 session, what's the best way for me to get a hold of an H3 peer support provider? Yeah, great question. So on our website homepage, um, there is a button that says wellness, and it's kind of this orange, purplish square button um, towards the bottom of the homepage. If you click on that, there's actually a lot of good wellness resources there. Um, and the Schwartz Rounds link is there to their website. And then if you click on H3, you're helping healers heal. It'll take you to the H3 website. And then on the right side of the page, you should see a button that says submit request for H3 peer support. And you can just submit that request. Um, if it is a routine debrief, so not an emergency, we'll have somebody scheduled to, to you within 24 hours on normal business days. Um, if it's after hours or on the weekend or a holiday, our A and O office has all been trained in H3, and so they are they are um, available to staff if it needs to be done at that moment to just call the A and O office, and they can do an H3 debrief with the the group. They have also been fantastic partners in H3, um, and have been doing peer support since the beginning. And so I would highly encourage people to utilize them as well. And just to clarify, do you, do I need to, for example, go to my supervisor to ask for this, or can I call if I think it would be helpful myself. So you can absolutely call if you think it would be helpful for yourself. Our supervisors are all aware of the H3 program. They're aware that if you need a minute um, or 10 minutes or 30 minutes to talk to somebody that that is a priority. And all of our nurse managers have been trained in H3 um, and they're also very um, amazing champions in our H3 program. And so absolutely, I. I would reach out and we can figure out you know, the timing you know, as needed. Do you think that by making these resources more available, we've kind of combated the stigma against taking care of one's own mental health? That is 100% my hope. Um, when we started the H3 program, our goal was to combat this stigma. We, and it is absolutely necessary. We need to stop pretending like the things we're experiencing at work are not affecting us. And you may not feel it. You know, a lot of times um, we'll get requests for H3 peer support and the request will say, you know, I think this staff member needs it. And we'll reach out to the staff member and they'll say, no, 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 I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not about being fine. It's about taking a, a, a minute to process something that happened um, because you know, whether or not you're fine right now doesn't define where you're gonna be 10 years from now when the same thing happens to you 20, 30, 100 times over. Um, 
And it's not about not being okay, right? Everybody needs H3 support. Everybody needs peer support. Um, and you know, they don't have to talk to somebody at work. We just, we want them to talk to somebody. Maybe they talk to their family member every night when they get home and that's their peer support. We just wanna make sure that people know it is normal and okay and recommended to process the things that they're going through and seeing on a daily basis. Um, and that it's, it's, you know, like I said, not normal the job that we do. And so it's important that we all acknowledge that yeah. and are able to seek help even if it doesn't feel like we might need it in that moment. Thank you, that was so well said. I couldn't agree with you more. So as we wrap up here, um, can you share with us maybe a positive story or a takeaway that you've had during this time? Um, you know, a special moment. I will say that being able to connect with staff has been um, really great for me and just, you know, our H3 sessions are confidential, so I would love to share some of the things that came <laughs> out of them, um, but I won't share anything specific. Um, but I just think that, you know, hearing staff say something that you can tell they've never said before out loud. Wow. Um, that's been really powerful because you can see them begin to process it, maybe even start to cry, and that's also 100% normal. Um, having whatever, um, you know, we talk about like what are your feelings, and some people, there is a range of emotions going on right now. And if it's not sad, and it's not hopeful, or if it's angry, you know, whatever the emotion is, just kind of validating it for that person has been, I think, really um, beneficial for me to see. and see that I can walk them through this. I'm sure, you know, this is probably what you do every day in your, <laughs> in your clinic, but for me it's something new. I, I don't, you know, give support or therapy. Um, so it's just been so great to see people kind of process through the things that they've been seeing. Well, I can't thank you enough for everything you do. And it's been an absolute pleasure getting to work with you and seeing the amazing things that you're doing to take care of all of us. It's truly remarkable. Yeah, and you I want as to well. thank you. Yeah, you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in today. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and to subscribe to the LAC USC Medical Center YouTube channel where you can find all of our previous episodes in addition to the episodes located on anchor.fm slash house calls with Dr. K. We also want to hear from you. So email us at lacuscpio at dhs.lacounty.gov. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week.